I just want to say one thing about the book, which is it's known as a history of the lampoon, but in fact, it really focuses on the lampoon in the 70s. It's really a way of looking at the 70s through the prism of the lampoon and how the 60s turned into the 80s. You and Michael and the founding editors, Doug Kenny and Henry Beard, um, came out of the Harvard Lampoon. How did you feel that Harvard Lampoon influence translated into the National Lampoon? The first thing about the Harvard Lampoon is that a lot of us got to work together and discovered what fun it was to put out a magazine and to write humor. While I was there, a very lucky event happened. We got a call from Betsy Blackwell, who was the editor of Mademoiselle magazine, saying, would we be willing to do a parody of Mademoiselle? And they would put it out as their July issue. It was a huge hit. When I got on the Harvard Lampoon, the circulation was 908. That's the number I remember. And from the Mademoiselle thing, it got up into the tens of thousands. And that showed business people that there was a future in doing a national humor magazine like the Lampoon. There is now a magazine called Southern Gardens and Guns, a real legitimate slick magazine, which is for people who like gardening and guns. Satire is um, uh, 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 co comedy before its time. Could the Lampoon, in its original form, exist today, leaving aside technology and the internet and everything else, just because reality has become so extreme that the line is blurred? Well, yeah, I think the Lampoon exists today in the form of Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert. One is a parody of a news program, so in that way that we parodied magazines and books and things in print, and the other uh, does that thing of assuming the persona of the enemy. And I think we sometimes got away with that.